Okay, so I've been watching a lot of videos about neural networks recently, and ever since, I've wanted to start doing something of my own. Okay, Carson from the future here. So basically, I'm monkey. <laughs> okay, so basically, it's been a couple weeks, and I've since changed the program since this, so you're not going to see those changes in this video, but, um... The changes that I've made and what you're seeing in this video are actually not neural networks, technically. Um, just by the way that I've coded them, they're not actually neural networks. Um, I basically tried to replicate neural network logic as closely as possible in the tools that I know and understand, which is GameMaker Studio 2. But um, because of that, here we are. Um, so it's technically not a neural network, but it does learn it will get better, um, and yeah, let's continue with the video. When I was 14, I found a cool site called BoxCar2D.com. It would generate completely random cars in the Box2D engine and see how far right it could go. The ones that would make it the furthest right would make up the basis of the next generation and would then be mutated. I would sometimes just load up this website and stare at it for hours just seeing how far they'd be able to go seeing how high the number would get. Then, about a year later, Seth Bling created Mar.io, a plugin for an emulator called BizHawk made up of neural networks and genetic algorithms that, as Seth Bling describes it, kicks butt at Super Mario World. It worked very similarly to how Boxcar 2D worked, but with far more complex algorithms, and each Mario was given a sense of its surroundings, unlike Boxcar 2D where the wheels just spin until the car stops. This video was always so intriguing to me, but as I was 15 at the time, I didn't really think I could be able to do anything like that. Finally, I came across videos from Carrie Cage, Jabril's, Code Bullet, and so many more awesome creators that just really inspired me to start looking into it again. So I did. I started with Giant Neural Networks video series on neural networks, and read sources linked in the description of Seth Bling's first Mario video. I slowly came to the realization that I didn't understand most of what they were talking about, but that was okay. I felt comfortable enough to start dipping my feet into the world of neural networks, AI, and machine learning. So I decided to start off by making something inspired by the first neural network video I ever saw. I wanted to make an AI similar to Mario. But instead of playing Super Mario Bros. or Super Mario World, it would play my own game, Stalescape. So, to start off, I gave the player the ability to see what's within a 16x16 16 16 grid of them. If a square is black, there's nothing there. If a square is white, there's a solid block there. And if the square is grey, there's some other type of object there. But only objects that you wouldn't collide with. So, right now, there are 16x16 16 16 inputs which is 256 inputs, but we have no outputs. Well, for now I'm only giving the player the ability to move, as I think aiming and shooting may be a little too complex for him now. So, we'll give the player four outputs, up, down, left, and right. Then, to start generation one, we'll create one or two connections at random. But what are connections, and what do they do? Well, when a connection is made from an input to an output, it means that the connection can now give an output based on the input, which is what it can see. But, how does it determine what to output based on the input? Well, that's what's showing on the wires themselves. The number on the far left is the input. 0 is nothing, 1 is a solid block, and 0 0.5 is a non-collidable object. But, these numbers can also appear negative. This is because each connection can be a positive one, or a negative one. Then the numbers on the right are the range that the number on the left must be within for the connection to output. These numbers, as well as what buttons to press when seeing what buttons at what positions on screen, are what will slowly be evolving over each generation. Oh yeah, each generation consists of 100 players and only the top 50% move on to be bred, which is what will be the population of the next generation. Future Carson again, because this old voiceover is really boring and I'm not bothered enough to re-record it all, so let's just recap everything real quick. The player can only see 16 by 16 blocks around it. 
the player doesn't know what any of the buttons do, the player doesn't know where to go, the players of generation 1 will be 100% random, and the top 50 players of the current generation get bred into the next generation. And what determines how good a player does? Score. Okay, I think we're good to get started now, so without further ado, let's go. When I ran these tests for the first time, I actually did it all live on Twitch, so if you go to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash ckletify, you can watch the full VOD and see how it did in each and every revision. So, without further ado, Revision, revision one. 1. So, like I said earlier, Generation 1 is just gonna be completely random, and will likely accomplish nothing more than holding a single button or just dying immediately. But, once Generation 1 finishes, Generation 2 will start based on the best of Generation 1. So here we are on Generation 2, and nothing's happening much now. Um, actually, things tend to happen much later on in the generations, which I'll actually get into a bit later. And I actually want to go ahead now and highlight a few of the things that I thought would go wrong with the project, based on what I was seeing early on. See, the only thing the player knows now is to get points, but you don't necessarily need points to complete the level. Shortly, the player will decide to go right, and it will collect some coins, and going right is the correct direction, but because it gained the coins after losing a certain amount of points, it was still clocking in around the same average as all the other players, despite it going the right way. So it wasn't fully understanding that right was in fact the right way. Another thing I thought was doomed to happen for sure was that eventually the player would only learn to go left. That's because at the beginning of this level, there are two coins placed directly to the left, where if you just hold left, you could gain the most amount of points possible for just holding one button. So I thought it would start evolving from going left as opposed to going right, which is the correct direction, because of this and the reason I stated earlier. But for now, I'm just going to put these aside and keep going on. Um, eventually, around Generation 3, halfway through, he figured out that right is kind of the way to go and it started doing it for a while but i was wondering why this was starting to happen around the latter half or midway point of the generation so i let it run for about two and a half more hours and it almost got to the 30th generation and the player was actually able to make it to the top right and top left corners of this first level but it wasn't quite able to complete it so i made some changes to the code and started anew. This new revision was interesting. A few changes were made, not too many. Instead of the top 50 going on to breed, now only the top 25 go on to breed. And players now start with one to four branches instead of just one, two, or three branches. So, it's only one extra branch, but it now allows for more inputs right off the bat just so we can get quicker results. This revision also brought along two minor visual changes. One is the color palette now changes after each generation, so you can have a better idea as to when the generation has just begun. And after each generation, a graph is updated in the top right, containing information on the highest score for each generation, as well as the average score for each generation. Now, to start these, the results are kind of skewed to the very top of the screen, but we'll slowly see this change as we continue through the revisions. All in all, this revision did see some improvements in the end, but we didn't let it run for too too long so we could save room for the next revision. How far did it get exactly? Well, let's find out. It seems as though the highest score achieved at all was a score of 56.75 and this score was received closer to the end of the lifespan of this revision and uh that's not a bad score it pretty much equates to the top right or top left as well so 
Now it's time to move on to the next revision. Revision 3 was easily the most groundbreaking breakthrough revision of them all, as I realized something very, very important. And that was that the entire time, instead of taking the top 50 and top 25 and using them to go on to breed, I was using the worst 50 and worst 25. So that explained why my second revision was much worse than the first. So, using this, I went back to the top 50 model and left it going overnight. And in the morning, I had found that it had completed the level. Multiple times, actually. But, how is it doing it? Well, let's take a look. If you look at the branches in the top left, a green color means on, and a red color means off. And as you can see, it's only four, five, or six branches that are running this whole thing. And they're really just checking to see if blocks are there or if blocks are not there. They're not really checking for coins right now. It seemed to have learned the layout of the map and figured out that it had to go in a circle instead of learning that coins are what gives it points. Oh yeah, I also changed a few other things. Such as, when the player reaches the portal, he now gains 100 points, as you can see in the graph in the top right, as well as the highest score in this gen in the top left. The reason for this is that, well, just telling it that score is all it wants is not too ideal. You also do want to tell it that the end is good, and once it does complete the level, you want to give it enough points so that it knows to bring that player on into the next generation. Oh, and I made it so these useless guys have a score of 0 instead of 50, because the algorithm uses their top score, the max score they achieved. So anything that doesn't accomplish anything and moves in no way gets a score of 0, so will therefore be moved to the very bottom of the top 50 list, if it even makes it there. So what's next for this little guy? Well, he has been able to complete a handful of levels after completing the first one, so I'm pretty confident in saying that he'll be, be able to complete a handful of levels as is, but we'll be able to complete a lot more with improvements. So, if you want to, you can catch me live on twitch.tv slash cklitify with streams of the AI, and uh, I will be following up this video with um, any data I gather from that, because I have a lot of ideas I want to put into this, a lot of stuff I want to do, um, and hopefully we can make this a really smart AI that can take on pretty much any level. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.